أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مكمحون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبسرون وسواء عليهم أأنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون إنما تنذر من اتبع الذكر وخشي الرحمن بالغيب فبشره بمغفرة وأجر كريم إنا نحن نحيي الموتى ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء أحصيناه في إمام مبين واضرب لهم مثلا أصحاب القرية إذ جاءها المرسلون إذ أرسلنا إليهم اثنين فكذبوهما فعززنا بثالث فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون قالوا ما أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا وما أنزل الرحمن من شيء إن أنتم إلا تكذبون قالوا ربنا يعلم إنا إليكم لمرسلون وما علينا إلا البلاغ المبين قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لئن لم تنتهوا لنرجمنكم وليمسنكم منا عذاب أليم قالوا طائركم معكم أئن ذكرتم بل أنتم قوم مسرفون وجاء من أقصى المدينة رجل يسعى قال يا قوم اتبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا من لا يسألكم أجرا وهم مهتدون وما لي لا أعبد الذي فطرني وإليه ترجعون أأتخذ من دونه آلهة إن يردني الرحمن بضر لا تغني عني شفاعتهم شيئا ولا ينقذون إني إذا لفي ضلال مبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعون قيل دخل الجنة قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفر لي ربي وجعلني من المكرمين وما أنزلنا على قومه من بعده من جند من 
مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَمَا كُنَّا مُنْزِلِينَ إِنْ كَانَتْ إِلَّا صَيْحَةً وَاحِدَةً فَإِذَا هُمْ خَامِدُونَ يَا حَسْرَةً عَلَى الْعِبَادِ ما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستهزئون ألم يروا كم أهلكنا قبلهم من الكرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا محضرون وآية لهم الأرض الميتة أحييناها وأخرجنا منها حبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وأعناب وفجرنا فيها من العيون ليأكلوا من ثمره وما عملته أيديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم الليل نسلخ منه النهار فإذا هم مظلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى عاد كالعرجون القديم للشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون وآية لهم أنا حملنا ذريتهم في الفلك المشحون وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يركبون وإن نشأ نغرقهم فلا صريخ لهم ولا هم ينقذون إلا رحمة منا ومتاعا إلى حين وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمُ اتَّقُوا مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَمَا خَلْفَكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ وَمَا تَأْتِيهِمْ مِنْ آيَةٍ مِنْ آيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ إِلَّا كَانُوا عَنْهَا مُعْرِضِينَ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ أَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ قَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنُطْعِمُ مَنْ لَوْ يَشَاءُ اللَّهُ أَطْعَمَهُ إِنْ أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا فِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينذرون إلا صيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخصمون فلا يستطيعون توسية ولا إلى أهلهم يرجعون ونفخ في السور فإذا هم من الأجداث إلى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع لدينا محضرون فاليوم لا تظلم نفس شيئا ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام 
قولا من رب رحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أعهد إليكم يا بني آدم ألا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وأن يعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أضل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون إصلوها اليوم بما كنتم تكفلون اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لطمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبسرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمره ننكسه في الخلق أفلا يعقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان حيا ويحق القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يأكلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينكرون صرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محضرون فلا يحزنك قولهم إن نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون أولم ير الإنسان أن خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العظام وهي رميم قل يحييها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون صدق الله العظيم اللهم آمين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيرنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر عظمة ذاتك في كل وقت وحيم 
اللهم إنا نحتفظك ونستودعك أدياننا وأبداننا وأنفسنا وأهلنا وأولادنا وأولادنا وأموالنا وكل شيء أعطيتنا اللهم اجعلنا وإياهم في كنفك وأمانك وعياذك من كل شيطان مريد وجبار عنيد وذي بغي وذي حسد ومن شر كل ذي شر إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم جملنا بالعافية والسلام وحققنا بالتقوى والاستقامة وأعذنا من موجبات الندامة إنك سميع الدعاء اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وأولادنا ومشايخنا وأصحابنا وإخواننا في الدين ولمن أحبنا فيك ولمن أحسن إلينا والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم على عبدك ورسولك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وارزقنا كمال المتابعة له ظاهرا وباتنا في عافية وسلامة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله يا الله يا الله ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه يجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله اللهم آمين 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 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما تقدموا لأنفسكم من خير تجدوه عند الله هو خيرا وأعظم أجرا واستغفر الله إن الله غفور رحيم أستغفر الله 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 
ഹലീമോ <laughs> وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم 
اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر عظمة ذاتك في كل وقت وحين فاعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله 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 سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين قال لهم الناس إن الناس قد جمعوا لكم فاخشوهم فزادهم إيمانا وقالوا حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل 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 
انقلبوا بنعمة من الله وفضل لم يمسسهم سوء واتبعوا رضوان الله والله ذو فضل عظيم اللهم يا لطيف التف بنا فيما جرت به المقادير اللهم يا لطيف التف بنا فيما جرت به المقادير اللهم يا لطيف التف بنا فيما جرت به المقادير وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم امين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد صاحب التاج والمعراج والبراك والعلم دافع البلاء والوباء والقحط والمرض والألم اسمه مكتوب مرفوع مشفوع منكوش في اللوه والقلم سيد العرب والعجم جسمه مقدس معتر متهر منور في البيت والحرم شمس الدحى بدر الدجى صدر العلا نور الهدى كهف الورى مصباح الظلم جميل الشيم شفيع الأمم صاحب الجود والكرم والله عاصمه وجبريل خادمه والبراك مركبه والمعراج سفره وسدرة المنتهى مقامه وقاب قوسين مطلوبه والمطلوب مقصوده والمقصود موجوده سيد المرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين أنيس الغريبين رحمة للعالمين راحة العاشقين مراد المشتاقين شمس العارفين سراج السالكين مصباح المقربين محب الفقراء والغرباء والمساكين سيد الثقلين نبي الحرمين إمام القبلتين وسيلتنا في الدارين وسيلتنا في الدارين صاحب قاب قوسين محبوب رب المشرقين والمغربين جد الحسن والحسين جد الحسن والحسين مولانا ومولى الثقلين أبي القاسم محمد بن عبد الله نور من نور الله نور من نور الله يا أيها المشتاقون بنور جماله صلوا عليه وآله وأصحابه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر عظمة ذاتك في كل وقت وحيم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار 
وارخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله اللهم آمين 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 بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا علي يا عظيم يا حليم يا عليم أنت ربي وعلمك حسبي فنعم الرب ربي ونعم الحسب حسبي تنصر من تشاء وأنت العزيز الرحيم نسألك العصمة في الحركات والسكنات والكلمات والإرادات والخطرات من الشكوك والذنون والأوهام الساترة للقلوب عن مطالعة الغيوب فقد ابتلي المؤمنون وزلزلوا زلزالا شديدا وإذ يقول المنافقون والذين في قلوبهم مرد ما وعدنا الله ورسوله إلا غرورا فثبتنا وانصرنا وسخر لنا هذا البحر كما سخرت البحر لموسى وسخرت النار لإبراهيم وسخرت الجبال والحديد لداود وسخرت الريح والشياطين والجن لسليمان وسخر لنا كل بحر هو لك في الأرض والسماء والملك والملكوت وبحر الدنيا وبحر الآخرة وسخر لنا كل شيء يا من بيده ملكوت كل شيء كاف ها يا عين صاد كاف ها يا عين صاد كاف ها يا عين صاد انصرنا فإنك خير الناصرين وافتح لنا فإنك خير الفاتحين واغفر لنا فإنك خير الغافرين وارحمنا فإنك خير الراحمين وارزقنا فإنك خير الرازقين واهدنا ونجنا من القوم الظالمين وهب لنا ريحا طيبة كما هي في علمك وانشرها علينا من خزائن رحمتك وَحْمِلْنَا بِهَا حَمْلَ الْكَرَامَةِ 
مع السلامة والعافية في الدين والدنيا والآخرة إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم يسر لنا أمورنا مع الراحة لقلوبنا وأبداننا والسلامة والعافية في دنيانا وديننا وكن لنا صاحبا في سفرنا وخليفة في أهلنا واطمس على وجوه أعدائنا وامسخهم على مكانتهم فلا يستطيعون المضيء ولا المجيء إلينا ولو نشاء لطمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبسرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ياسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مكمحون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبسرون شاهت الوجوه شاهت الوجوه شاهت الوجوه وعنت الوجوه للحي القيوم وقد خاب من حمل ظلما طاسين حاميم عين قاف مرج البحرين يلتقيان بينهما برزخ لا يبغيان حاميم 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 هم الأمر وجاء النصر فعلينا لا ينصرون حاميم تنزيل الكتاب من الله العزيز العليم غافر الذنب وقابل الطوب شديد العقاب ذي الطول لا إله إلا هو إليه المصير بسم الله بابنا تبارك حيطاننا ياسين سقفنا كاف ها يا عين صاد كفايتنا حاميم عين سين قاف حمايتنا 
فسيكفيكهم الله وهو السميع العليم فسيكفيكهم الله وهو السميع العليم فسيكفيكهم الله وهو السميع العليم ستر العرش مسبول علينا وعين الله ناظرة إلينا بحول الله لا يقدر علينا والله من ورائهم محيط بل هو قرآن مجيد في لوح محفوظ فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين إن وليي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين إن وليي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين إن وليي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله والحمد لله رب العالمين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لطيف بعباده يرزق من يشاء وهو القوي العزيز 
Ya Latif, 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 Ya Latif. Ya Latif, 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 Ya Latif. يا لطيفا بخلقه يا عليما بخلقه يا خبيرا بخلقه ألطف بنا يا لطيف يا عليم يا خبير يا لطيفا بخلقه يا عليما بخلقه يا خبيرا بخلقه ألطف بنا يا لطيف يا عليم يا خبير يا لطيفا بخلقه يا عليما بخلقه يا خبيرا بخلقه ألطف بنا يا لطيف يا عليم يا خبير اللهم يا من لطفت في خلق السماوات والأرض ولطفت بالأجنة في بطون أمهاتها ألطف بنا لطفا يليك بكرمك ورحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله اللهم يا من جعلت الصلاة على النبي من القربات نتقرب إليك بكل صلاة سليت عليه من أول النشأة إلى ما لا نهاية من الكمالات بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يسوق الخير إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يصرف السوء إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله وما بكم من نعمة فمن الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يسوق الخير إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يصرف السوء إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله وما بكم من نعمة فمن الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يسوق الخير إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يصرف السوء إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله وما بكم من نعمة فمن الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك إن شاء الله وكنتني وذكر جامعة لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله إن شاء الله مكتوعا اللهم أمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد 
كما بركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for our Shaykh, teacher, Murshid, and master, Sayyidina Shaykh Faisal Hamid Abdul Razak. O oh Allah, may you increase him in knowledge and wisdom. O oh Allah, may you protect him from evil, and we pray that he will lead his marids on the straight path towards you. O oh Allah, we pray for the Shaykh and his family. We pray that you strengthen them in Iman, keep them in good health, and grant them long life in Islam. O oh Allah, we pray that you protect them from all evil, ease their trials, and grant them the sweetness of paradise. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِينَا عَذَابِ النَّارِ Allah forgive us for our sins and guide us on the straight path leading to paradise. O oh Allah, you know the needs of all of us present here. O oh Allah, answer our dua and take care of our needs. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for our parents that you grant them your grace and mercy as they raise us in childhood. O oh, oh Allah, grant our parents long life and good health in Islam. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive our parents and grant them paradise. O oh Allah, for our parents who have passed away and returned to you, Allah, we beg you to forgive them. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for all the marids of Shaykh Faisal throughout the world. O oh Allah, we pray that you ease our trials and, us, and grant us the strength to face our trials. O oh Allah, make it easy for us to gain true knowledge and to practice it, to be good marids and to get ever closer to you. O oh Allah, you know the needs of all of the marids. O oh Allah, we beg you to answer our, our dua and take care of our needs. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for all the Muslims around the world. O oh Allah, we pray that you strengthen us in Iman. O oh Allah, we pray for unity and to make us stronger as a nation. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please comfort and relieve all Muslims who are suffering and have suffered losses. O oh Allah, you are the all-powerful and the almighty. O oh Allah, we beg you to give us victory against the unbelievers. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for the International Islamic Forum and al Fasl and Dhikr Halaqa. May you make it easy for us to establish many messages for your sake. May you bless the Islamic form and then facilitate the Dhikr Halakha to be a beacon of, to be a beacon of light for Islam throughout the world. And may help us to finish building the new masjid soon and make it easy for us to do so. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadan wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursani walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله اللهم بارك لنا في رجب وشعبان وبلغنا رمضان 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 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم 
لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما تقدم لأنفسكم من خير تجدوه عند الله هو خيرا وأعظم أجرا واستغفر الله إن الله غفور رحيم استغفر الله 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 العظيم الذي لا اله الا هو الحي القيوم واتوب اليه وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأم 
wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammadin abdika wa rasulika nabiyyil ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammadin abdika wa rasulika nabiyyil ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammadin abdika wa rasulika nabiyyil ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammadin abdika wa rasulika nabiyyil ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammadin abdika wa rasulika nabiyyil ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammadin abdika wa rasulika nabiyyil ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim tasliman bi qadri azamati dhatika fi kulli waqtin wa hin a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ 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 لا إله إلا الله 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 سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَلَى سَيِّدَنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَأَصْحَابِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ سُبْحَانَ رَبِّكَ رَبِّ الْعِزَّةِ عَمَّا يَصِفُونَ وَسَلَامٌ عَلَى الْمُرْسَلِينَ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ آمِينَ أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين ووفقنا توفيق الصالحين وانفعنا اللهم بالقرآن والذكر الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا من فضلك علما وتعليما يقربنا منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا سهلا اللهم أعزنا من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وأصلح لنا شأننا كله لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم 
wa sallallahu ta'ala ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in amin amin amma ba'd my dear respected brothers and sisters my dear murids assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu may the peace and blessings of god almighty be with each and every one of you and welcome once again to this special program coming to you from the Islamic Forum of Canada where we share with you this message of mercy from God Almighty to all of his creation. This is our daily broadcast. We start at 7 p.m. Toronto time or Eastern time every day. And we come to you from your Zawiya here at the Islamic Forum. We thank you for joining us today for our broadcast and we hope you can join us every day for this program 7 p.m. Toronto time. We kindly request you to reach out to others to tell your family members, your relatives, your friends and other Muslims that you know to watch the program. Share the YouTube link with them, uh, youtube.com forward slash Sheikh Faisal. Um, and inshallah they will look at the program they will benefit and you will receive increased blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do remember to subscribe to the channel uh, there is a subscribe uh, button uh, you click on that button to subscribe and then next to the subscribe button there's a bell icon click on the bell icon and select all for notifications so that you'll be notified of all our different programs we also kindly request you to enter your information in the chat your name and city where you're from and then your updates on the three projects the gratitude project the salawat project and the Quran project. Uh, you enter your update on, on the project, inshallah, the three projects. May Allah SWT bless you for so doing. Uh, we want to recognize all the sponsors for the dinner program, uh, all those uh, families and especially sisters that have sponsored the dinner program. May Allah SWT bless all of them. And we want to recognize as well all our donors, those who donated today and yesterday and before to the Islamic Forum, and we make special dua for them. Allah SWT bless all our donors. Allah SWT answer the dua uh, and grant them special blessings and ni'mah and bounties and grace, uh, our donors and their families and loved ones. Uh, may Allah SWT bless them and increase them in his bounties, increase them in, in his risk, uh, grant them more wealth, much more than what they do need to the Islam form. So we make special dua for all our donors and we thank them and we appreciate their financial support for the Islamic forum. I also want to remind you what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in the hadith, ma naqasa malin bi sadaqa. Your wealth will never decrease because of spending it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ma naqasa malin bi sadaqa. The sadaqa that you give will never cause your wealth to decrease. It will increase your wealth. And this, this scholars have said that uh, you, you, your wealth doesn't decrease, it means indeed, certainly, surely your wealth will increase. This is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ma naqasa malin bi sadaqa. This is what the Prophet sallallahu says in the hadith. And the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the ayatul infaq, the ayah of spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, lan tanalul birra hatta tunfiku mimma tuhibbun you will never attain true piety bir unless and until you spend what you love you spend a portion of your wealth for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and so we invite you to donate regularly and generously to the islamic forum and we make special dua for you i also want to reassure you that your safety your well-being your health uh, as well as your spirituality, that's the concern of our program. This program uh, focuses on taking care of your safety, your well-being, your afia, 
as well as your spirituality that you can be in good health and you can be safe and you can uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you from all sources of harm and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you that great blessing of spirituality your connection with him your connection with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and and so every day we we uh, make this special dua for you for your safety your spirituality and so on that uh, you can be uh, granted the goodness of this world and the goodness of the hereafter the, and that's the comprehensive dua for the believers that's mentioned in the quran rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab an-nar this this is a comprehensive dua it's called a dua al jami'a the comprehensive dua because it contains everything you can ask for to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's contained in this dua the comprehensive dua we also have a special series of beautiful short video clips uh, prepared by our staff here at the islamic forum for your uh, viewing enjoyment and benefit short video clips uh, of interesting relevant beautiful topics that you can benefit from and you can share with others as well as we have uh, a special series of videos video lectures on the seera of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and all of that is a gift for you free of charge it's it's for anyone inshallah so if you would like to re receive uh, these special video clips and a special series of seerah lectures then please send us your email address so we can send it to you inshallah uh, the uh, beautiful video clips and video lectures that we the, our staff uh, have prepared especially for you i would like now to make a special dua for each and every one of you dua for all our donors those who donated today yesterday and before all our donors without exception and then special dua for the sponsors of our dinner program and then special dua for all those who entered their information in the chat and for each and every one of you uh, i want to make special dua for each and every one of you whatever dua you want to make to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put that knee in your heart for that dua and we'll make uh, dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on your need that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can accept your dua and grant you everything you ask for and also I want to include in my dua uh, for my family uh, and my parents my mother and my father may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and please do mention them and remember them in, in your dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for so doing so kindly raise your hands and join me in dua Allahumma ameen أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم الصراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المغلوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر عظمة ذاتك في كل وقت وحيم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر عظمة ذاتك في كل وقت وحيم اللهم إنا نستحفظك ونستودعك أدياننا وأبداننا وأنفسنا وأهلنا وأهلنا وأولادنا وأموالنا وكل شيء أعطيتنا اللهم اجعلنا وإياهم في كنفك وأمانك وعياذك من كل شيطان مريد وجبار عنيد وذي بغي وذي حسد ومن شر كل ذي شر إنك على كل شيء قدير 
اللهم جملنا بالعافية والسلام وحققنا بالتقوى والاستقامة وأعذنا من موجبات الندام إنك سميع الدعاء اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وأولادنا ومشايخنا وأصحابنا وإخواننا في الدين ولمن أحبنا فيك ولمن أحسن إلينا والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب دعوات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم على عبدك ورسولك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وارزقنا كمال المتابعة له ظاهرا وباتنا في عافية وسلامة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وادخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله اللهم آمين 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 May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in tawfiq and in kubul and in ziyadah Amin, Amin I also want to remind you of our ongoing projects uh, the action item we have ongoing for our program uh, the three projects, the gratitude project, the salawat project and the Quran project for you to engage in these projects regularly on a daily basis and then you enter your update in the chat inshallah. Today I want to say something about the salawat project, to focus on the salawat project to talk something about the beautiful amazing virtues of salawat on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to recite Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin abdika wa rasulika nabi al ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim many are the great virtues of salawat Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala reveals in the Quran the ayah of salawat in Surah Al-Ahzab chapter 33 verse 56 where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala reveals Bismillah rahim Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad Yes, many are the great virtues and blessings and benefits of reciting salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam among them, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned these in the hadith. When you send one salawat on the Prophet ﷺ, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends ten salawat upon you. Look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You send one salawat on the Prophet, ﷺ, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends ten salawat upon you. When you send one salawat on the Prophet, ﷺ, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you ten hasanat, ten good deeds are recorded for you when you send one salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you send one salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ten sayyiat, ten bad deeds and sins are erased from your records. So you're forgiven and then the, that uh, 
bad deed is erased from your records, never to be heard of about in the dunya and in the akhirah, especially in the akhirah and the day of judgment. And when you send one salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Allah subhanahu wa taala elevates you ten degrees higher. You're raised up ten degrees more closer to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Such indeed are the great benefits and blessings of salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In addition to that. Your, your dua is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you precede your dua with salawat and you end your dua with salawat. So you sandwich your dua in between salawat, as we do in our dua all the time. So at the beginning, hamd and salawat, then make whatever dua you want to make, and then salawat and hamd at the end, in this manner. It's from the adab of dua that your dua, and when you do it like this, your dua is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the dua of salawat, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, you're saying, that dua of salawat is guaranteed acceptance by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when it's placed before and after whatever dua you want to make, it, it raises up your dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It elevates your dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It takes up your dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is accepted in that way. And, and then the salawat grants you nearness to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa on the day of judgment. He says in the hadith, the closest of people to me on the Day of Judgment, the nearest of people to me on the Day of Judgment are those who are most frequent in reciting salawat upon me. This is the great blessing of reciting salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, you get closer to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, the hadith speaks of the, the, the Day of Judgment, but even in this dunya, you get closer to the Prophet every time you recite salawat on the Prophet Closeness in the dunya, closeness in the akhirah. How close do you want to be to the Prophet and to his noble Ahlul Bayt and to the Sahabas, the awliya? Yes, how close you want to be to the Prophet You answer that question and then you decide how much salawat you want to recite on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Because every time you're reciting salawat, you're getting closer to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Imagine yourself on the day of judgment and there are billions of people there. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi is in the center on, the, bur uh, on the, 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 the beautiful carriage, the most beautiful carriage you'll ever see, uh, tied to the burak. That's the carriage of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi He's holding... Liwa ul hamd, the banner of praise that, uh, that is given on that day of judgment, making him uh, demonstrating that he is the leader of everything and everyone on that day of judgment. He has a prophecy. How close do you want to be to him? Wouldn't you like for, for, for you to be close to him? You can see him and he can see you. Are you close to him? You can see him. You can see the Ahlul Bayt on, on that on that carriage with him, the prophetic entourage, uh, Sayyidina Fatima al Zahra, Sayyidina Ali al Murtada, Sayyidina Imam Hassan, Sayyidina Imam Hussein, and so on. Ahlul Bayt are there with the Prophet. Uh, of course, we would love to be close to him. And every time you recite salawat, you're getting closer to the Prophet. So I want you to recite salawat as much as you can as part of this salawat project. Every day you recite your salawat on the Prophet sallallahu And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and honor you to be able to recite salawat on his most beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen, ameen, ameen. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim wa salatu wa salam wa ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in amma ba'd. I want to share with you today this wonderful opportunity to gain much blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions in the hadith, ma naqasa malu abdin min sadaqa. The wealth of a person will never decrease because of spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that your wealth will increase 
when you spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you engage in infaq fi sabilillah, your wealth will increase. And so the opportunity for you to increase your wealth greatly by spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The opportunity I want to share with you is uh, for our live stream broadcast. This broadcast that you who have been watching, uh, many of you every day, many of you several times a week. Uh, the, the daily broadcast we have at 7 p.m., the Juma broadcast at 1 p.m. on Fridays, uh, the special programs, the special maulids, halakas, uh, and so on. So many different programs we have. And many people are benefiting from this program, as you know, many brothers and sisters like yourselves, families from many different countries are benefiting from the live stream broadcast. And we need to acquire new equipment and to update our equipment we have that we are using for the live stream broadcast. And there are several items we need. And the first one I want to share with you today and to appeal to you for this, it's the camera. We need to get a new camera. And the budget for the camera is $6,000. Uh, the, uh, our, our wonderful staff here at Islam Forum, they've done their research uh, in this matter. And so we need to acquire that camera uh, and the cost is $6,000. And we hope you can uh, donate towards uh, this project. We've divided that amount into shares of $100. And so you can donate one share of $100 or five shares, which is $500 or 10 shares, which is $1,000 or more, whatever you can afford and whatever blessings you would like to receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To make your donation, uh, you can go to our website, Islam Forum website at islamicforumonline.com. And then on the donation page, uh, you would see uh, one of the buttons for the different categories of donation labeled live stream equipment. It is the second button in the list of uh, categories for donation. So you click on that button, live stream equipment, and you would make your donations for this specific uh, cause that we are appealing to you for. Uh, we, we hope you can respond and respond generously uh, immediately by donating as many shares as you can each share being $100, and the total amount we would like to raise for the camera, it's $6,000. This is the first item we need, and there are several items. We would let you know once we collect the money for the camera, we would go on to the next item, and we let you know the details about that. So uh, do respond and respond generously, and may Allah SWT bless you. Once again, the Prophet ﷺ says, ما نقص مال من صدقة. That the wealth of a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never decreases because they spend in the way of Allah. Their wealth will only increase. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them increase in their wealth. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your entire family and all your loved ones because of your financial support for the Islamic forum. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim was salatu was salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in amma ba'd Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in the Quran Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyamu kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun And in that same section of Surah Al-Baqarah the section that deals with Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an hudal linnasi wa bayyinatim min al-huda wal furqan. Ramadan is coming soon. This is the most blessed month of the year. The great guest of Ramadan is coming to visit us to spend but a few days with us, ayyama ma'dudat, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran. And so now is the time to prepare to welcome Ramadan. Now is the time for you to prepare for Ramadan, to get into the Ramadan mode, 
to get into the Ramadan mindset, to get into the Ramadan spirit. Now is the time for you to do so. And you must know that the more you prepare, the more you will succeed in this month of Ramadan. We want you to strive for great success in this month of Ramadan. In this special series of lectures, we present to you the ways in which you can prepare to welcome Ramadan, the things that you can do to prepare for Ramadan, the things you should not do in order to prepare for Ramadan, and also the prophetic advices, the advice of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam for a successful Ramadan. We make do Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Make this Ramadan your best Ramadan ever in your life so far. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you the highest levels of success in this month of Ramadan. But remember, you have to prepare for this month of Ramadan. And you must know that to fail to prepare is to prepare to fail. Yes. So don't let this opportunity pass you by. And this is why we have this special series of lectures now as we lead up to Ramadan to help you to prepare for the blessed great month of Ramadan that is coming soon to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you in this month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his uh, mercies and forgiveness and special blessings on you and grant you freedom from hellfire. The greatest freedom we can ever achieve in our entire existence is freedom from hellfire. And Ramadan offers that opportunity. So we hope you enjoy these series of lectures and it helps you to prepare earnestly for the blessed month of Ramadan. Ameen. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Bismillahi rahman rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah Wa ashadu anna Sayyidina Muhammadan abdullahi wa rasooluh Allahumma anfa'ana bima allamtana Wa allimna ma yanfawna وَزِدْنَا مِنْ فَضْلِكَ عِلْمًا وَتَعْلِيمًا وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ الْعَلِيِّ الْعَظِيمِ وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَلَى سَيِّدِنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَأَصْحَابِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ أَمَّا بَعْنِ My dear most respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, be with each and every one of you. We continue today for our series on the blessed month of Ramadan. In our last presentation, we talked about the khutbah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for this blessed month of Ramadan. And we mentioned six points from the khutbah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. We will review that and then proceed with the other part of the khutbah or the remaining part of the khutbah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam for this blessed month of Ramadan. This khutbah is reported in the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, which is recorded and reported by Imam Ibn Khuzayma in his Sahih collection of hadith of the Prophet alayhi salat was salam, as well as Imam al-Bayhaqi and Imam ibn Habban in his Sahih or authentic collection of the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salat was salam. In the, the, this khutbah of the Prophet alayhi salat was salam, he mentioned several important points. Six of these points we mentioned in our previous program. And by way of review, these points are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed the believers with the special blessing of the month of Ramadan and has placed therein many great opportunities 
for the believers to gain the mercy and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Jannah after freedom from hellfire. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam described this month of Ramadan as a great and blessed month. He then mentioned the special night in this month of Ramadan, Laylatul Qadr, the night of power and its great blessings, among which is that it is greater in blessings than a thousand months. Then the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam mentions the obligation of fasting in this month of Ramadan. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in the Quran, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyam, kama kutiba ala aladheena min qablikum, la'allakum tattakoon. Then the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam mentions the special qiyam in the month of Ramadan, the special nightly prayers of Ramadan, salatu taraweeh the special unique prayer that Muslims perform in the nights of Ramadan, 20 rakat of Salatul Taraweeh, uh, which is a voluntary nafil prayer, but it has great rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam says, Man qama Ramadan imanan wa ahtisaban ghufir lahu ma taqaddama min dhambih, or kama qala alayhi salatu wa salam, whoever observes Salatul Taraweeh, in this month of Ramadan, with faith and devotion and with the expectation of reward from Allah, will have all his or her past sins forgiven. And then the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam also mentioned with respect to salat al-taraweeh, man qama ma'al imam hatta yansarif kutiba lahu qiyam al-layl, that whoever performs salat al-taraweeh during the nights of Ramadan and remains in prayer with the imam, uh, from the beginning to the end, meaning from Salat al-Isha, Salat al tarawi and then Salat al-Witr will be rewarded as if they spend the entire night in prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned in his khutbah that the good deeds that we perform in Ramadan are rewarded immensely more uh, with, with thawab, with blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, than the same good deed that we would perform in a time other than Ramadan. And so the rewards are increased for the believers in the blessed month of Ramadan. And finally, the last point that we dealt with in our previous program, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says that Ramadan is the month of patience, shahru sabr, and the reward of patience is the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we discussed this important mindset that we should achieve uh, before the month of Ramadan to prepare for the month of Ramadan so that we would gain optimum benefit from the blessed month of Ramadan, this great uh, opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presents us with and the great blessing, the great guest that he gives to us in this blessed month of Ramadan. And yes, the scholars have described the month of Ramadan as the greatest of guests that can come to visit us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ayyam ma'dudat, it comes to visit us but for a few days, not for very long. But for the nature of Ramadan is such that it comes upon us and, and before we know it, it is, it is leaving us, it is departing, it is going away. And, and such are the, the noble guests that come to visit us, guests, uh, special guests that come and, and visit us. They don't stay forever, they don't stay for a long time, they stay for a short period of time. But just as how if an important person is coming to visit us in our homes, we would prepare to receive that person. We would clean our home, we would make all kinds of changes in our home that would uh, be, make it comfortable for that guest. We would try to make all the necessary preparations so that guests would be comfortable while they're with us and so on. In a similar way now, we need to prepare for the blessed month of Ramadan. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ delivered this khutbah to the Sahabas so that they can start preparing for this blessed month of Ramadan in order to gain the optimum, the maximum benefit from the blessed month of Ramadan. The Prophet ﷺ continues in his khutbah for Ramadan. He says, it is the month to visit the poor, the sick and the needy and to share their sorrows. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
mentions in a hadith Qudsi about the importance of visiting him. When he would say in the Day of Judgment, addressing the believers, addressing his servants, addressing his creation, O oh my servants, I was sick and you didn't visit me. And then they would ask, O oh Allah, O oh Rabbil Alameen, O oh Lord of the Universe, how can we visit you? How can you be sick? And so on and so forth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would explain to them, would tell them that. And, and this is in the hadith Qudsi uh, that the Prophet alayhi salatu conveys to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, this month of Ramadan is the month to visit the poor, the sick and the needy, and to share their sorrows. And so there is this care and concern we should have for others. And this is one of the feelings we should prepare for in Ramadan and we should have in the month of Ramadan. And it is not by coincidence that the, the motto of the Islamic forum is caring for humanity one soul at a time. And what beautiful words those are, caring for humanity one soul at a time. And that is the mindset we need to acquire for this month of Ramadan. To, to have this caring and this concern for, for humanity, for everyone. And, and, and most, mostly among them, the believers who are closest to us. So the Prophet ﷺ wants us to have this care and concern for the believers. And so he said, we should do something now uh, about this care we have, we should show this care and concern. We should demonstrate this care and concern by the things that we do. And he says, it's a month to visit the poor, to visit the sick, to visit the needy, and to share their sorrows, to make it easier for them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this hadith Qudsi, amazing hadith Qudsi, he says, on the day of judgment, as he would ask, his servants, oh my servants, I was sick and you didn't visit me. And the servants would say, Ya Rabbil Alameen, O Lord of the worlds, O Allah, how can we visit you? You're the Lord of the worlds. How can you be sick and we visit you? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, Did you not know that my servant so and so was sick, was ill? But you didn't visit him. If you had visited him, you would have found me there. This is the importance. If you had visited him, that sick, ill believer, you would have found me here. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. To show us the importance of visiting people who are ill. Oh, my servants, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, I was hungry, but you didn't feed me. The servants would say, Ya Rabbil Alameen, how can we feed you? You are, you are the Lord of the worlds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, Did you not know that my servant so and so was hungry, was in need of food, but you didn't give them anything? If you had given them food, if you had, you had fed them, you would have found me there. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would address uh, his servants, O oh, my servants, I was naked and you didn't clothe me. They would say, Ya Rabbil Alameen, how can we clothe you? And he would say, did you not know of my servant so and so, who was in need of clothing, who was poor and they had these needs? If you had given them clothing, you would have found me there with them. And so the Prophet ﷺ tells us about this month of Ramadan. It is the month to visit the poor, the sick, the needy, and to share with them, to have this concern for them, and to do whatever little we can do for them. To remove their sorrows, to remove their pain, their anger, to take care of their needs. The Prophet ﷺ mentions in his hadith, مَنْ نَفَّسَ عَنْ مُؤْمِنٍ قُرْبَةً مِنْ قُرْبِ الدُّنْيَا 
نَفَسَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ كُرْبَةً مِنْ كُرْبِ الْآخِرَةِ أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ That if you take care of one of the needs of a believer in this world, in this dunya, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would take care of one of your needs on the day of judgment. Subhanallah. Would we not love that on that dreaded day of judgment, when the conditions are so difficult, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would take care of our needs, would forgive us and have mercy on us and turn to us with his kindness, with his lutf. We would love that. And the way to achieve that, the way to get that, the way to receive that is to take care of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world. And Ramadan is a time for that. And so the Prophet sallallahu says, it is the month to visit the poor, the sick, the needy, and to share their sorrows, to take care of them. And I hope that all of us, all of us would strive to do that, would strive to take care of, of the believers and to take care of people in society. If we know of someone who is poor and who is hungry and we can give them food and we can take care of their needs, whatever their needs are, then rush to do that. This is the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the noble heritage and the noble legacy of the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we would take care of humanity. As those, the words of that wonderful motto says, uh, caring for humanity one soul at a time. And this is what we should all be doing. We should all have this mindset of caring for humanity one soul at a time. The Prophet والسلام, continues in his khutbah for the blessed month of Ramadan. It is the month where the nourishment, the sustenance and the income of believing Muslims increase and they are blessed. Yes, the sustenance for the believers increase in this blessed month of Ramadan. And this is an important point because the, we've heard in the past from several Muslims, they say that their income decreases in the month of Ramadan because they're so busy uh, with fasting and with taraweeh and so on that they don't get time to work and to, to, to gain income, to gain material income. And, and they feel that they're losing out in the blessed month of Ramadan because they have to do all these different acts of ibadah. They have to spend time in a masjid. They have to get up early for suhoor to prepare to, for, for fasting. And because they're fasting, they feel tired and they can't do all the things that they do in their work. And then they have to leave work early to get home for iftar in the evening and for maghrib. And then they have to go to the masjid for salat al -Isha and Tarawi and so on and so forth and they say they they have to spend so much time worshiping Allah in Ramadan that they don't get enough time to work and and their their sustenance increase some people feel this way but this is wrong this is wrong because we must remember that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gives us our sustenance Allah is a razaq هُوَ الرَّزَّاكُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ In Surah Al-Thariyat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, He is the one who gives us rizq, who gives us sustenance. Our rizq, our sustenance, our providence comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the provider for us. And so when we turn to Him, worshipping Him, He turns to us and He gives us. He opens the doors of his barakah, his blessings and mercy for us. And Ramadan is a time for that. And so the sustenance of the believers increase. And remember, we don't need the sustenance of Allah, the risk of Allah in the 30, 30 or 29 days of Ramadan alone. We need it every day of our lives. And every day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for us. And so don't ever think that because we worship Allah, we serve Allah, and we spend time doing so, that we would lose out from the material things of the dunya. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who takes care of us. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, promises us that our nourishment and sustenance and income would increase 
in this blessed month of Ramadan, the more we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after Ramadan, that blessing, that income and sustenance would continue to flow in our lives because of the great things we do in the month of Ramadan. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam continues in his khutbah. Anyone who invites others to break their fast at iftar will have their sins forgiven and be saved from the fire of hell and will receive a reward equal to the fasting person without reducing that person's reward in any respect. The great blessing of giving someone iftar, giving them food to break their fast with at the time of Maghrib. Immense blessings. The Prophet said anyone who gives someone to break their fast, something to someone who's fasting, iftar will have their sins forgiven. Will be blessed with Jannah because they're saved from hellfire. And will receive a reward equal to the fasting person without reducing the rewards of that fasting person in any way. So the fasting person receive their reward without any reduction. But you also receive the, the same amount of reward because you feed them. You give them food to break their fast with. After they finish that day of fasting, that at the time of Maghrib at sunset, they can break their fast and they can have dinner. They can have food to eat after that long day of fasting and you provide that food for them. You get the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now some of the followers, followers of the Prophet alayhi salatu says, not all of us may find food to share with someone so that that person can break their fast. And the Prophet alayhi salatu responded, Allah will reward you even if you help the fasting Muslim to break his or her fast with a date or a sip of water or a drink of milk. Subhanallah. Even something small, a date or a few dates, uh, a drink of water, a glass of milk, even if we provide that for them, we still receive rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, in, in this advice of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he didn't say that we should provide iftar only for poor Muslims who are fasting. It's anyone who is fasting, including someone who can afford to feed themselves in this month of Ramadan. They can provide themselves with food, but that's not the point. It is to give people who are fasting iftar. Because one of, in addition to the, the, the blessings that we receive, there's also the community spirit that should be developed in this month of Ramadan, where Muslims can meet one another in the masjids, that they can leave their homes and go to the masjid before Maghrib, and they can break their fast in the masjid, uh, in the masjid at, the, at the time of Maghrib, and then pray Salat al-Maghrib and after Maghrib have dinner after they would spend that day fasting. And, and so the community, the, the, the parents and children, the entire family can converge on the masjid every day throughout this blessed month of Ramadan. And Muslims can gather together and meet one another and get to know one another well and build that healthy relationship amongst themselves. And this is important for us to do. And, and the Prophet alayhi salatu was was extremely concerned about Muslims coming together. And so the way the Sharia, ah, the law of Islam is designed, it is to get us to come together as often as possible. And so five times every day, we are invited to come together in the houses of Allah, in the masjids, to perform the Fard Salah. And if we're not able to do that all the time because of our preoccupations and we have to pray at work or at home and so on. But once every week, every Friday, the community is invited to come together in the house of Allah, in the masjid, for this weekly gathering that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us to. And then for Eid al-Fitr, the entire community is invited to come together again for this annual meeting, for Eid al-Adha. And in a similar way now, in the nights of Ramadan. 
a time of at the time of iftar and so the prophet alayhi salat wasalam encourages us to participate in this iftar program to sponsor iftars to invite others uh, for iftar to build that community spirit and i hope inshallah that all of us can strive to do this throughout this month of ramadan to bring people together and the best place you can be in is the masjid it's in the masjid. And so uh, let us all try to be in, in, in the masjids, wherever we are, in any country, in any city, wherever we are, try to go to the masjids and invite your, your family members, invite uh, your relatives, invite all your friends to go, come along with you. And even your non-Muslim friends, invite them to come out to the masjid in this month of Ramadan and to participate in iftar. They are not fasting, but, but invite them to to participate in that dinner, to give them food, uh, let them enjoy the iftar dinners with you, and let them see what we as Muslims do in this blessed month of Ramadan. And so the Prophet alayhi salatu encouraged us to engage in this iftar program during this month of Ramadan. In addition to that, the, the management the administration of the masjid should do something in this month of Ramadan. We can call it an open house that we can have in our masjids. Wherever you are, whichever masjid you go to, try to arrange this where you can have a special iftar dinner sometime in the month of Ramadan on a day that's convenient and invite the non-Muslims in your community to come out and, and participate in that iftar program. A special evening for the non-Muslims, uh, the leaders in the community, community leaders, uh, leaders of other uh, faith groups, other religious groups, uh, the leaders of different organizations in the community and so on. Invite them to come out and, and be with you and enjoy this iftar program in the month of Ramadan and, and try to reach out to the poor people in society and invite them to come out in this blessed month of Ramadan to, to enjoy this iftar program. The Prophet alayhi salatu has told us about the great benefits of preparing iftar for others in this blessed month of Ramadan. The Prophet alayhi salatu continued in his khutbah, he said that this month of Ramadan its beginning is mercy, its middle part is forgiveness, and its last part is freedom from hell, hellfire. Awaluhu rahmah, awsatuhu maghfira, wa akhiruhu al-itku min al-nar. So the Prophet ﷺ divided this month into three parts. And the first part, he says, is a time for us to, to acquire uh, or to receive the, the rahmah, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second part is for us to receive the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, the last part of this month is for us to receive the great reward, the great blessing, and that is freedom from hellfire. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of us with his rahmah, with his maghfirah, and his freedom from hellfire. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam continues in his khutbah for this blessed month of Ramadan. He said that there are four characteristics we should increase our, in ourselves in this blessed month of Ramadan. Two by which we'll please Allah and two other characteristics that we cannot live without. This is a time for us to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A time for us to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our special ibadah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity with sincerity, to have this sincere outpouring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have this sincere munajat, this dialogue, this communication with Allah from our heart as we outpour uh, our, our feelings to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, begging Him for His forgiveness, begging Him for His mercy, begging Him for, for freedom from hellfire. And the greatest of believers, 
the most pious of believers throughout these 14 centuries of our history, they're the ones that have been doing this. Even though they live a life of dedication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would constantly beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the freedom from hellfire. And this is what we should do. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam used to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the fard salah, Allahumma ajirni minan nar. Allahumma ajirni minan nar. Oh Allah, save me from the fire of hell. And he is the Prophet of Allah. The greatest of believers, the greatest of human beings, the greatest of the greatest of all the creation of Allah. And still he would beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for freedom from hellfire. What about us? What about us? Full of sins and doing all kinds of wrong things. Should we not be even more concerned to, to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for freedom from hellfire? Ramadan is that wonderful opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the great blessings of Ramadan. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfir Allah li wa lakum wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We want to make special dua now for everyone, for each and every one of you. Uh, firstly, for our donors, all those who donated today and yesterday and before, those who donated to Islam for we want to thank our donors tremendously. And we want to make special dua for all our donors, praying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them with his special blessings, bless their entire family. Uh, bless all their loved ones because of their donation to the Islamic Forum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer all their dua uh, because of their donation to the Islamic Forum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enrich them many, many more times. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant barakah uh, in, in their wealth, in their possessions, and grant them increased risk, sustenance from Him all because of their donation to the Islam Forum. So we make special dua for all our donors. We also remember and make special dua for our, the sponsors of our dinner program. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of them. We remember all of them and make special dua for all the sponsors of our dinner program. And for everyone that is signed into the chat, we recognize that you've taken the extra effort uh, to uh, sign into the chat. Uh, entering your name and the city where you're from and then your update on the three beautiful blessed projects that we are doing inshallah so special um, dua for all those who entered in the chat and remember once again the uh, the projects that we're doing three th three of them the gratitude project the salawat project and the quran project that for the gratitude project you enter into the chat something that you're grateful to Allah SWT for. And then for the Salawat project, uh, you enter in the chat how many Salawat you recited today for your daily total, and then the overall total, the cumulative total since you started the Salawat project with us, since you made your near to join the Salawat project. Until now, uh, how many you've recited in total? And then for the Quran project, for you to enter, uh, the where you've arrived in your recitation of the Quran ever since you made your near to join our Quran project. Uh, so which surah you've stopped at today, uh, which ayah number that you've stopped at. And we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you to uh, do ongoing khatams, many khatams, your first one, the most important one, the most enjoyable one, and then many khatams thereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you to recite this book daily. The Quran project, at least one page a day you recite. So uh, remember to enter all of that information in the chat. I, there are also several requests for dua. We want to uh, include all the requests for dua. Uh, you can send in your request for dua in the chat. Type, in, type into the chat what, what dua you, you want to request us to do. We make that dua for you. 
Uh, if it's something personal, you, you don't want to put it in the chat, then you can send us an email with your request for dua to the email address we use for this program, sheikhfaisal at gmail.com. Uh, so you can, uh, we encourage you to send all the requests for du'a every day, when, whatever you want to, uh, us to make du'a for, and then we, we, we make that du'a for you. And uh, inshallah, we, we pray Allah SWT will answer your du'a and take care of your needs, inshallah. Uh, so your requests for du'a you can send in. And then also, uh, if there's any anniversary you're observing, uh, like birthday anniversary, wedding anniversary, death anniversary for uh, one, uh, your family member, parents, grandparents, uh, your spouse, children, and so on. Uh, you put that in the chat so we can make dua for you as well. So th th this is how we want to make this program interactive for each and every one of you and for each and every one of you to benefit from this program. I also want to uh, include in the near for dua uh, each and every one of you, whatever dua you want to make to Allah SWT, keep that knee in your heart and we make that dua for you. And I also want to include uh, my parents, my mom and dad in dua and please do mention them in your dua as well. May Allah SWT bless you for so doing. Uh, then uh, I, I want to once again remind you of our special appeal uh, for you to donate to the Islam Forum. We need your financial support and we make this special appeal to you that you can give a generous donation to the Islam Forum uh, whenever you're able to do so, whether it's every day or every week uh, and so on, then you go to our website. This is the easiest and most convenient way to make your donations. Go to our website, Islamic Forum Online. The staff will enter the information in the chat so you can write it down. You go to the website, to the donation page, and there are several items there that you can make donations for. And whatever you'd like to do, you do your donations. The blessings are great from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so now I kindly request you to raise your hands and join me in dua with all of this near that I mention now, inshallah. Allahumma ameen. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المغلوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر عظمة ذاتك في كل وقت وحين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا الله الحليم الكريم سبحان الله رب العرش العظيم والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم إنا نسألك موجبات رحمتك وعزائم مغفرتك والغنيمة من كل بر والسلامة من كل إثن اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرت ولا هما إلا فرجت ولا دينا إلا قديت ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا ميتا إلا رحمت ولا ميتا إلا رحمت ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة هي لك رضا إلا قديتها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا ربنا هب لنا من لدنك ذرية طيبة إنك سميع الدعاء ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وارخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون 
وسلامون على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله اللهم آمين 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 May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in tawfiq and kubul and ziyadah. As we conclude our program for today, we, once again we, we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you from the coronavirus pandemic and from all sources of harm. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you and your entire family and your loved ones safe and secured in good health and well-being. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, keep you and shower his special uh, blessings upon you. We thank you for joining our broadcast today. We hope you can join us every day, inshallah. Do remember to reach out to your family members, your relatives, your friends, and other Muslims you know, and invite them to watch the program. Inshallah, they benefit from it, and you'll gain increased blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you always in the shade of his special mercies. Until we meet again, assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu.